Well, welcome to the Huskies Hockey Insider Podcast. I'm Mick Hatton from The Rink Live, and I'm very happy to be joined by St. Cloud State men's assistant coach, uh, Nick Oliver. Nick, how are you doing today? It's very cold out today, but uh, how are you doing? Can't complain, Mick. Um, I don't know, in four years of playing here, and it's my fourth year coach, and I don't know that I've ever had a bad day here at uh, St. Cloud State as a Husky. So um, we're all good. We're plugging forward, excited to get on the road and, and head out to play a very good Denver team. Yeah, uh, was talking with uh, uh, Dave Shyak a little bit earlier uh, today. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I don't think people realize is uh, uh, almost how I, I don't want to say regimented, but there's an awful lot of routine that you guys like to get into, right? Uh, you you guys like to have practice at a certain time. You you work out on certain days at certain times. I mean, it's very kind of plotted along, and and this is this guy's role. You know, this is my role. This is your role. This, you know, you kind of set into things, uh, all that routine and all that other stuff. Now, uh, you know, Coach Brett Larson is gone, and th this is not a bad thing, right, for any of these guys. This is a tremendous honor for him. But your head coach is gone, and two of your top players are gone. Uh, does it feel a little weird, I guess, uh, you know, just uh, <laughs> at this point of the season to have those guys kind of gone for a little bit? Yeah, you know, I I wouldn't say it feels weird, Mick, but it's it's definitely change, right? And I think um, to your point, it change no matter what, whether it's athletics, whether it's, um, you know, going to school, whether it's your, your day job. Uh, change is always hard, right? And it's, mm -hmm. it, being able to adapt is, is always a challenge. And um, so that's our, our jobs now. And, and our goal now is to be able to adapt. And, and you know, we feel, uh, and, and I know this, I can say this about um, the guys that I work with, Dave and, and RJ and our support staff, but um, those guys are awesome. Like, and, and so um, I've got a ton of faith um, in our group that, that we're going to be able to obviously take on a little bit more each and, and um, continue to hopefully put our guys in the best possible position to be successful. And um, I think our guys are excited too. Like, I think um, everyone has to take on a little bit more and, and line combinations are going to be different now. Power plays are going to be different. Penalty kills are different. Um, you know, I, I think early in the year, we got some good, uh, at least, obviously you never like to see a guy get hurt, but Sam was out for um, quite a bit in the first half there. So we had guys having to fill those minutes and, um, you know, we like the depth of our decor to fill, fill some of Pervy's minutes. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a good challenge for us. Um, good problem to have because we're jacked for those three to be able to head over and they actually just flew out today. So um, fired up for those guys. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, from, from a coaching standpoint, obviously you, you mentioned RJ Inga, who's been the director of hockey operations. He's a former <laughs> Colorado, Colorado college assistant coach that uh, there's been a waiver so that uh, he's going to be allowed to, officially help you guys coach be behind the bench here for these few weeks and stuff. But uh, when you're talking about uh, adding a little bit more, uh, you know, can you give a, I guess a, a couple of rough uh, ideas, I guess, of, of different things that maybe each one of you guys are picking up a little bit or. Yeah, no, I, I think in a general sense, your, your day-to-day -day changes in this, you just have to, all of a sudden as a group, you're looking at things differently, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times, you know, the the daily message and the daily approach and the daily plan will come from Brett. Um, and obviously as assistants, you you do your part to to support that and, and help facilitate that. Um, so now obviously without Brett here, it, it's, um, you know, all week, you, you meet in the morning for a few hours as a staff and you come up with uh, what's the plan today in practice? What's, what's the message? Um, what's the theme? What are we trying to get out of it? Um, whereas before there, there's some collaboration, but ultimately that, that comes from Brett and he has a vision for what he wants done. So, um, I think all of us are, are taking more of that on a little bit now. And, um, just from a preparation standpoint, obviously, uh, RJ's picking up, um, uh, some of the power play stuff with Brett gone and, um, you know, outside of that, just uh, some different video responsibilities. And, um, but our, our goal here is just to make things seem, uh, as seamless as is of a transition as it can be for our guys. And um, that's been our message this week that, that nothing really changes. Uh, obviously we're going to miss those guys, but um, it's on us now, every one of us to, to uh, elevate what we're doing, coaches, players, uh, to put ourselves in the best chance to, to have some success. 
uh, it, it's interesting. I was just thinking about this, and it's like you're you're the uh, out of the three uh, coaches, you're the you're the coach that's been on the campus the longest out of the three of you guys. Uh, you're you're the you're generally the senior most to get the guy at, the, at, at in the in the coaching group uh, right now. <laughs> Well, I, that makes me bet. I think that makes me the best at, uh, at the campus tours, you know, when we have recruits on campus, that, that's all that gets you, Mick, by the way, is you're the first guy that gets volunteered to go walk kids and parents through campus, which is great for me because it's, it's a walk down memory lane every time I do it. And I love showing off the, the university and what we have to offer, but, um, the other guys don't, don't really know the campus. So they get out of that side of it. So, um, I get my steps and frequently, <laughs> Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, you know, the other two coaches, because I think people are still, you know, particularly with, uh, you know, the pandemic and stuff, I, you know, people maybe haven't had as much opportunity maybe to interact with, with the other two guys that are on the staff, uh, up until this point, uh, Dave Shayak is a guy that, uh, you know, his first season was last season with you guys. Uh, and, and now you've gotten to, you know, you've gotten to know him like much better. I mean, you, you know, coaches, but you, you don't know him as as closely, obviously, when you're working with him one on one. Uh, as you've got to know Dave, what are things that uh, strike you about him and and strengths you think that he kind of brings to this team? Yeah, no, he's it's kind of cool. Like Dave has a very similar background to what I had growing up, in the sense that his dad was a longtime uh, teacher, coach, and I think he's got. Uh, and I actually got to meet Dave's dad for the first time last week in Grand Forks. Um, so being from Manitoba, uh, I think number one, he fits, fits our culture, fits the personalities um, of our staff, of our players um, in terms of uh, his work ethic, uh, his values, uh, what he brings on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but he, he's a great, great teacher, great communicator. And uh, he's as real and as genuine as they come. And I think uh, the more I'm getting into this and learning, um, you can't you can't fake and you can't um, try to be someone you're not. And I, I don't think that gets you very far. And I think your players read into that. So um, I think Dave, every single day, he's he's genuine, but he's an unbelievable communicator, unbelievable teacher, um, knows the game very, very well, works very hard at it. He's been great with our defensemen, um, great with our penalty kills. So um he's he's brought a lot uh in a lot of those areas for sure and um for me personally he's fun to be around every day and i've learned learned a lot from someone like him who's who's been doing it as long as as he has yeah and you know what i think you brought up something that has always struck me about dave and i've dealt with dave ever since uh he was back as uh, the head coach at uh, alaska anchorage i've had contact with him over the years at, at different points and one of the things i've always appreciated about dave is you don't have to really second guess as to where he's coming from on, on something he, he he is who like you're saying he is who he is and and he's going to give it to you straight whether you whether it's what you want to hear or not right yeah and and i think the best like and just the best players that we've had at st cloud here like they've all uh, a common denominator is they all like to be coached like that. Like they like to um, be pushed. They like honesty. They like to know exactly where they stand. Um, you don't have to push buttons with them or, you know, like it's, it, it's a little bit more black and white and here's what you need to improve on. Here's what I'm seeing. Um, and I think Dave's very good with that, but he, in the same sense, he's very smart uh, with the game and knows the game very well. Um, which I think goes a long ways when, when you're trying to help kids, they, they, they trust you and they understand that um, you, you're looking out for their best interests and you can help them get better too. Uh, it was funny because I, I had Nick Perbix on, uh, I think it was last week and, and we were talking about the, the three, three on five goal that uh, he ended up, he ended up helping set up. And, and he said that, that Schick had, had, had told him, before you guys started when it was just a, a normal penalty kill hey nick we don't need you necessarily leading a charge here uh we, we we need you to make sure you stick back so that you know we're killing this penalty and so then they came out and they ended up with that rush uh they ended up scoring with the two men down <laughs> And, and Nick said he came back to the to the the box and and he said I'm sorry about that coach and he just kind of said well that's fine with me yeah no you that's uh, it's been a, a 
fun, fun year for sure from a penalty kill standpoint. And, um, but the best part about it is like, when you look at some of these guys like Nick Perbix and Micah Miller and Kevin Fitzgerald, like when you go through how many penalties they've actually killed off in their college careers, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool to, to see. And just even in our meetings, like those guys are able to, they understand what our system is, but um, they coach themselves now in a lot of ways. And they, mm -hmm. and they understand when things go wrong, they understand when things go, go well and why that is. Um, so we let those guys play a little bit and they have some freedom to take some chances. And, and obviously Purby's one of those guys too. Yeah. Uh, uh, before the season, uh, we, we were talking and uh, uh, RJ Inga there, the joke was, was that you were, you and your wife uh, were his billet family for a while. You, sure. how, how long did it, uh, RJ end up living with you then? Probably about a month, I would say. Um, it was great. It was great. Obviously, I'd known RJ through uh, the hockey circles from years past and worked some uh, USA hockey camps with them out in Buffalo in the summers. So I had gotten to know RJ fairly well. And um, so my wife and I were excited to have him in and, and be able to obviously get to know him and, and get him up and running here in St. Cloud before he, before he found a place. Uh, you know, from a hockey standpoint, uh, now that you're getting a chance to work with them a little bit more closely on a, on a, on a daily basis. So what are things that strike you just about, about RJ and what he's kind of brought to your staff just overall? Extremely, extremely hard worker, extremely detailed, extremely prepared. Um, you know, the amount of time that he puts into, his job and his role and the amount that he does for, for our staff and players is, is tremendous. Um, so I think it starts there with him. I think he's a, a tremendous person, tremendous family person. Um, our guys are, are fortunate that, that they have someone like RJ that um, really they turn to him with everything, school, hockey, life, uh, a lot of different things. Um, and on top of that, he's a really, really bright hockey person. Um, you know, usually when we get into a week of practice, he's already watched at least two games of our opponent that we're going to see that upcoming week on Sunday. Um, and he's already got some video prepared that way. So um, he's really the first one who, who kind of gives us a, an outline going into our Monday and starting our week of kind of what we're preparing for and what we're going to see. And, um, and he helps a lot from a hockey side. So um, yeah, another guy that, again, for me as a younger coach, like fortunate to learn from, he's been doing it uh, for a while at a high level. And, and I learned a lot of stuff from, from him already this year, just how they, how they did things at CC. And, um, and obviously he worked with their forwards out there. So I can, I can pick his brain as, as he's helping me uh, put some stuff together for ours. So it's, it's been really good. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, last weekend uh, in North Dakota that, you know, it, it was, I almost thought it was it was kind of a, in some ways almost a, a mirror image of, of what had happened the last time you guys played where one team plays extremely well on Friday and the other team doesn't play particularly well and the one team dominates and then the, the second night I, I thought you guys played much better but uh, anyway just give me your assessment I guess a little bit of, of what you thought uh, of, of the North Dakota series what you guys kind of took out of that. Yeah, well, it was Friday night. Uh, wasn't our night in any way. Um, they were the much better team in every area. Um, I thought it was uh, probably one of the first times since I've been here in my four years that, that I thought we had, um, from an effort standpoint, from an execution standpoint, um, a real downer like that. And they were desperate. They, they played that way and they executed and they were really good. And um, I thought Saturday we responded very well. Um, I thought... Uh, we obviously got off to a fast start. Um, you know, they get the one nothing lead, but I think up until that point, we still liked our game. Uh, we get one on the power play. Uh, we get one at the tail end of a penalty kill. Uh, we get a shorty right at the end of the first period. So you go going to the break up, up three to one and, and playing, playing pretty well. And I thought from there, like it was, it was a pretty even game. Uh, we needed to try to find a way to get the fourth one, um, which we didn't. Uh, and unfortunately, that was that was just kind of a window in, in 40 minutes where they were just a little bit methodically able to just plug away, got one in the second, got one in the third. Um, you know, defensemen scored all their goals. Um, it wasn't, um, you know, terrible breakdowns on our end. I thought it was just good hockey back and forth. And that Saturday's game actually had a little bit um, more up and down from from both sides. So, um, yeah, I, I think obviously you like the response. Um, and for us, it was just a really good 
weekend to be in an environment like that and win or lose, you get better playing North Dakota and you get better playing in that rink and dealing with, with the different pressures. So um, for us, it's just using that and continuing to build and get better. And I think we've got 12 games left now to um, continue pushing this thing higher and, um, and, and moving it forward. So that's, that's our thought now. And, and now, now you, here's how you got to respond, right? You got to go and play uh, a series at uh, the team that's leading the conference right now. And, you know, I, I, there are maybe some people that are maybe a little bit surprised, I guess, that Denver is where they are. I'm not one of them. Uh, you know, I, I thought last season was kind of an aberration for them. And it seems like they've added some really good younger talent uh, in, into the mix there. And their goalie is, is ha having uh, much more of a season like he's had before last season. Uh, when you look at Denver, uh, you know, what, what are things that, that strike you about them and, and what are just big things for your, your team this weekend? Yeah, I, I'm with you, Mick. I, th I think they're, they're as good of a team in, in college hockey as there is. And uh, they're well coached. They're deep. Uh, they're skilled. Uh, they're talented. Um, they come at you with with three really good offensive lines and a fourth line that's uh, comprised of really good USHL players back when they were in junior. Um, a decor that's mobile, offensive, uh, proven goalie. Um, so yeah, we it's it's a challenge. Like they're they're a really good team, um, and we're excited about that. Like I think um, you know off of last year's team, they return. Uh, I would say most of their better players, right? Brink, Gutman, Stapley, Savoy, Benning, um, you know, and then they add like really good, a really good class, like uh, Carter Mazur, um, Shai Boyum, uh, Sean Behrens. Uh, so it, it's a good roster. It's a good roster and they're well coached and they've been good at home this year. Um, so they're as good of a team as you'll see in college hockey and, and good special teams, good power play. So um, not a lot of weaknesses there. And we know that we know we're up against uh, a really good opponent. And, and for us, you know, like I just mentioned, coming off last weekend, it's about um, continuing to get better with our group and finding what our identity is going to be here these next few weeks um, with some guys in some different roles. I, I, I've always found, well, particularly in the last, I don't know, several years, we'll even say go back 10 years. I, I've always thought that uh, it's a, it's a tremendous matchup uh from this standpoint when st cloud state and denver play is that they are very similar in a lot of ways in terms of they're both very good transition teams it seems like both teams like to play with a lot of speed and so it's like a lot of up and down hockey which i like to watch right i don't like to i don't want to see a bunch of stuff on in the corners and <laughs> and on the boards constantly i want to see the the skill that's uh, on hand and uh, that's why I always enjoy these series is, is watching uh, those two similar type of teams and see who, who's going to kind of come up on, on top. I, I don't know if you kind of see a lot of similarities and plus they're both deep teams, like you were mentioning. I, I think it's a, a great matchup here. Yeah. I know last year when we played them twice in, in Omaha in the pod, obviously we had a very similar roster and, and as do they um, from last year to this year. Uh, two really good games, uh, to your point, two very up and down games, uh, both teams that, that I think have uh, speed and skill to, to make plays in transition. Um, I think when, when we're good, we defend well as a five-man group. Um, we're pretty accountable to that. I think they're really disciplined with that game as well. Um, so it's a team that against them, like you have to stay disciplined with your game because they're so disciplined as well. Um, they're going to get a few chances throughout the course of the game. Um, and with how they play, you're probably going to get a few chances as well. Um, but you can't force it, um, because as soon as you start, um, pressing the issue, that's where, that's where they're a little bit more dangerous, but, um, yeah, it, it should be fun hockey. Like we're, we're excited to get out there and, uh, obviously looking to get back in the, in the win column on Friday. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, Nick Perpix, uh, just yesterday was, was named the NCHC player of the month. And, uh, boy, you look at the, the, the numbers that he put up the, in some of the, the games, uh, with how well he played, you played with, you know, you played with Nick Jensen, who was the WCHA, uh, you know, defenseman of, of the year that one year. And is obviously he's doing very well, uh, should be an all-star in, in the NHL this, this season, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, you see any similarities? Uh, you, there's some distinct differences, obviously, in their game. But, but just from this standpoint, 
uh, when Nick Jensen wanted to, he could kind of take over a game or he could, he could control the pace of a game. To me, that's kind of where Nick Perbix is. When Nick Perbix is playing on top of his game, uh, it sure feels like he can control tempo. Do you, do you agree with that? or? I do. I do. I think both are, um, you know, you, I think in order to be, be a good team, you have to have difference makers at every position. And he's, he's a number one back there for us. Um, plays in all situations. He, he has an ability to um, take games over himself individually, which is hard to find guys that can do that, right? There's probably only a few in, in the NCHC that are true number ones. And Nick's one of them. And, and Jens was the same way back when, when we played together. Um, I think both the, the skating ability allows him um, the, the ability, both on the defensive side of the puck, the offensive side of the puck, um, to do that. And I can still remember as a player, like we'd be doing, you know, any sort of uh, line rush for line rush against type drill, two on two continuous. And, um, you know, you'd get matched up against, against Jens and like, it was no contest um, every time. Like he, he was just such an elite skater and an elite competitor. And I think that's why Nick's had such a good uh, and long NHL career. Now it's weird to say that it's been long, but it, but it has been right. Right. And, um, because he, he's, he's such a good skater. He defends at a high level. He can play a ton of minutes. It's never seems like he gets tired and he's efficient and reliable and you can count on that. Um, and I think the, the fun part for Nick Perbix is, is that his offensive upside probably at the same, uh, level might even be a little bit higher than, than Jens's was, um, in terms of his power playability and, um, potential ability to do that at the next level. So, um, yeah, both are outstanding players and, and obviously Jens is having a great career and um, Purby's obviously well on his way. Well, well, I'm curious is so where will, will his upside be a little bit higher at, at the NHL level on the power play up there? Is it because of how he handles the puck? You know, he handles the puck a little bit differently, obviously than, than Jens was Jens is more of a guy that it's, it's a tremendous amount of tempo with what he's doing. Like you were saying, he's such an elite skater that I think, you know, he, he had the ability to kind of weave in and around things and, and create that way where Herbie is, it seems like he's so creative with the puck. Is he a little bit more creative with the puck maybe than, than gents or. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I, Cause I think Perby, one of Perby's strengths is he can slow it down too. Yeah. And, and he can slow it down. He can, um manipulate people with his his hands and his long stick and his brain um but also when he wants to get up and go with his with his legs and, and kind of lead the charge he can do that as well so I, I think he's um a little more versatile uh in some of those areas right um and and definitely there's still areas of Purby's game offensively uh, uh probably some of the shooting stuff um, that I think Jens had a, had a pretty heavy shot at the college level. Um, but no, per, Perby's, I think the, the offensive side of his game and the upside is, is in, in the versatility where I think he can, he can, um, make a difference in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, as, as you're looking ahead to the schedule now with the, these, uh, rescheduled games, uh, a unique situation, uh, you know, other teams, I guess, are going through, you know, similar things because of, games getting postponed and, and you're trying to get them all in, but uh, you know, just the experience of, of last season, being in the pod, playing three, four, four games in, in a week. Uh, I would imagine you guys are, are, you know, with the veteran group that you have, I, I imagine you're kind of talking a little bit about that, about just from a maintenance standpoint that maybe some of that experience is coming into play here. Am I right there? Yeah, for sure. I think it's, we're obviously getting into a stretch now where, five games in eight days coming up and, you know, we're uh, being mindful of, of practice times, workout times, uh, rest time, you know, uh, making sure that ultimately we're, we're doing everything we can to put these guys in a, in the best spot uh, come Friday night to, to start this little run and have, have the jump and have juice and have energy. And, um, you know, a big piece of that is not just what we're doing at the rink, but away from the rink and what the guys are doing nutrition wise and sleep wise and hydration. And I think that's such a big part of it now. Um, so I think that piece, having a veteran group, I think that's, that's a big part of it, right? These guys have been through it. Um, they understand some of the challenges and, and how you need to prepare and, and, you know, obviously we're fully expecting, uh, our leadership group and our veteran guys to, to be able to, you know, get themselves geared up and, and be able to withstand everything through this, this little stretch coming up. 
Uh, you uh, have to ask about this uh, down at Hockey Day. Uh, East Grand Forks was down there. Your dad's an assistant coach. Uh, he got a. I, correct me if I'm wrong. This is this was not his first Hockey Day Minnesota uh, on the bench. Am I am I right there? Nope, not his first rodeo. <laughs> nope, not his first rodeo. He's uh, he's an experienced Hockey Day outdoor outdoor game uh, coach. So uh, no, it was cool to cool to see. Uh, obviously, a great event they put on, and cool to see him back down there. Yeah. Uh, how did he stay warm? Does he have, does he have some keys then to staying warm uh, on this or? Their staff had some big time jackets. He, he was wearing it, wearing it around like that, that night he came back up to our game. Um, so yeah, I think the, yeah, the staff had some nice big insulated jackets going, but you know him, he's got like yeah, all the years of hunting and fishing and uh, being outdoors. He's got the, the long, the long underwear and the socks and, you know, the thermal stuff. So um, those Canadians, he's from Winnipeg. Those Canadians have that, that cold part down pretty good, but I don't know. I watched it on TV. He looked like he was freezing his tail off at times. So I don't, I'm not buying that that he's got it all all figured out. It still looked pretty cold that day. <laughs> it was very it was very cold down there. I, I was I was down there for a couple of days, and it it did, I don't think it got massively warmer on that Saturday when he was there. But uh, uh, at the same time, uh, he was he was the head coach up up at Roseau. Uh, you played up at Roseau. Uh, the Rams having a very good season. Uh, I would imagine as alum. Uh, you're falling from a distance, but I would imagine it's always uh, good to see the Rams uh, doing well, huh? Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. They have a good, great group. Um, obviously, we were excited uh, this fall. Uh, um, when when we recruited Thor Bob, um, so it was fun to, to obviously uh, have another Rozo kid uh, going to be coming through the program in a few years. And so obviously following Thor in, in that group, it's a good group. Like it's they played some good hockey this year. Um, they just had a great game with Warroad a few few nights ago and, and had some success over there and, and got that series split, um, which is always a big deal in our room because you got Luke Jaycox, who's from Warroad, and I'm a Rozo guy, so we, we always go back and forth um, over that. So thank, thankfully the Rams got uh, tied up the season series there. Um, but, no, they're having a great run of it, and they're deep, and they have some good players, so it'll be fun for them to uh, hopefully continue to push through through sections. Well, uh, Nick, I, I should wrap up, not take up any, any more of your time, but uh, as always, uh, I, it's always so much fun to talk hockey with you, Nick, and uh, I always appreciate it, and you're always so generous with your time. I just want to say thank you and uh, wish you guys good luck here this weekend up at Denver. Hey, likewise, Mick. It's fun to uh, chat chat about Husky hockey with you. Um, appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me on. All right. This has been the Husky Hockey Insider Podcast. Please check out all of our great content here on The Rink Live.